So I have made a bunch of different burgers. I've made burgers from beans and proteins. I have tried to copy the impossible recipe or the beyond recipe. And I even introduced you to one of my favorite binding ingredients for the burger, methyl cellulose. Now today we're gonna try a new burger. This burger is very similar to that methyl cellulose burger that I introduced you to, but there's a few different tweaks and it's not my recipe. This burger recipe was sent to me by my friends over at Modernist Pantry. Modernist Pantry is where I get a lot of the additives and odd ingredients that you see in a lot of the plant-based cooking that I do. Now this video is not sponsored by Modernist Pantry, but they did send me this kit for free to try out. Now this burger kit has pretty much everything that they have for a veggie burger. You, know, you might need to get some extra things on your own, but let's see, so it comes with a pack of the nutritional yeast flakes. This is a cool kind of like flat paper pack versus the what you would normally get. Let's see, uh, some faba bean protein. We have a, a jar of purified coconut oil, pack of white vinegar powder, some methyl cellulose HV. This is the one that I recommended in my video. Methyl cellulose HV has the, just the right consistency for making a burger. And we also have a big pack of textured vegetable protein. Now for the recipe, you will need everything that you have here, but you'll also need some beet protein, cocoa powder, garlic powder, onion powder, brown thyme, white pepper, porcini powder, water, amino acids, liquid smoke. A few of the things I know I'm not gonna be able to find local is the porcini powder and the beet powder. So I'm gonna replace those. So let's go ahead and make and try out and see how good this is. The Modernist Pantry plant-based ground patty. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the marbled fat. So to make the marble fat, we are going to use a blender. So we need 100 grams of water, two grams of methyl cellulose. Now they use quite a bit more methyl cellulose in their recipe than I used in mine. That might solve some of the binding issues that people have messaged me about with my recipe using the methyl cellulose. I need about 300 grams of coconut oil and start a very slow mixture. Maybe I'll put the cap back on here. And this is gonna thicken up. Now I'm gonna slowly start to drizzle this in. Now, just like if you're emulsifying anything, we need this to emulsify. If it doesn't emulsify and separate and watery, it's not gonna work. It needs to be one gelled together liquid. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I mean, that went together Perfect. This is gonna be a great marbled fat. I think this is gonna work really well. So for this next step here, they have us placing it on a shallow metal pan. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of spread this out on the, the pan here. It could be probably pretty thin because we're just gonna kind of use this to scrape up bits of fat once it freezes. So let's place this in the freezer. We'll come back in two hours. Okay, so it's been about two hours. Our fat is frozen solid. So I have a, a mixing bowl here that I threw in the freezer. So this is cold because we wanna keep this mixture cold. I'm gonna scrape off about 100 grams of fat, which is what we're gonna need for one pound of the fake meat. Their instructions say pea-sized chunks. I'm, I'm getting almost snow, essentially. The only problem with this is this part of the process makes kind of a mess. My hands are covered in like a, a broken up coconut oil. Okay, we have our 100 grams of coconut fat. There's some pretty large chunks in here, unfortunately, but man, this is, a, this is a process right here. I'm not a fan of this process. Freeze it into a square block, like if you have like a Rubbermaid container or a silicone square and grate it on a cheese grater. Uh, but I'm gonna throw this back in the freezer, clean this up, and then let's get going on the rest of this process. This fat was something. Oh my gosh. So to mix together the rest of this, we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. I'm gonna put those in a large bowl. So we're gonna do a cup of their textured vegetable protein. Now I will say that this uh, Druid's Grove textured vegetable protein looks pretty good. We're gonna do about one gram cocoa powder, about six grams of methyl cellulose, so a little bit over a tablespoon. They're using quite a bit of methyl cellulose, a lot more than what I used. Their seasonings, which are just a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and thyme. About six grams of their yeast flakes, 30 grams of the faba bean protein, eight grams of their vinegar powder, which I'll tell you, as soon as you open it up, smells like vinegar. They have about two grams of mushroom of their porcini powder, which I'm just gonna use, about two grams of mushroom seasoning. Just gonna give this a quick mix together, which at this point, this is kind of looking like a dry cereal here, but let's see how the rest of it comes together. So we need about a cup of water, 
about a quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke, about a tablespoon of amino acids, and then I didn't have the beet juice or the beetroot powder. So I'm just gonna use some beet juice. So about two teaspoons. So at this point we have both of our ingredients. We have our wet ingredients, which is like a nice red color that's looking pretty good. And then we have our dry ingredients. We're gonna mix these two together. We just need a spatula to do that and just make sure that everything is evenly mixed in. So I'm actually gonna stop at this point because this is already a very wet mixture. Very, very wet. We're gonna let this hydrate for about the next 20 minutes. Definitely doesn't look like ground beef yet. Okay, so a little over 20 minutes has, has passed. I went ahead and added the rest of that liquid, the rest of that like eighth of a cup of liquid. The TVP really soaked in the rest of that. It's looking pretty good. It's nice and soft. I gave it a little try. So at this point we have our fat out of the freezer. So I'm gonna mix in about half of the fat trying to get some of the big bits and some of the little bits. And I'm just gonna kind of fold that in. Now we're just gonna mix in, now that the first part's been mixed in, just mix in the second half of this fat. And we're gonna do this fairly quickly. Now I think for me, the only thing that I'm gonna do, just a little bit different, is gonna add just a little bit more beet juice to kind of give it a little bit more pink color. But there it is. That's our ground beef. This is a pretty firm mixture, I'll be honest. Like, I mean, like, I feel like you can firm a meatball in this pretty well. Modernist Pantry says is that this could really replace any sort of uh, ground meat that you need in a recipe. So this here, this recipe is gonna make about four burgers. So let's just go ahead and make four burger patties. Now I just have a little bit of oil kind of coat in the bottom of my cast iron skillet on like a medium heat. So let's just throw it in and see what happens with this guy. I'm also gonna give it just a, just a touch of salt on the top. We're gonna crack on some black pepper. I'll be honest, I am really liking the way that this burger is coming together. It looks, it looks beautiful. Now I'm just gonna try it. No condiments, not masking it up, but I'll tell you, look at that cross cut. I mean, look at that. That's a nice looking, that's a nice looking burger. So let's try this out, let's see. It's super juicy. I mean, just super juicy. You normally don't get that type of juiciness out of like a veggie burger. Wow, wow, mm, that is good. I'll be honest, I didn't think it was gonna come out that delicious. Modernist Pantry nailed it. Very, very tender. Didn't come out like a normal veggie patty where it's just like one big solid piece. There's, there's juice pockets, like those pockets of fat really made a big difference. Good job, Modernist Pantry. I love this. This is the new recipe, the methyl cellulose recipe. They use quite a bit more methyl cellulose, a lot more than what I would have used. I think that's pretty great. So I'll leave the links down in the description below for everything that you'll need to make this. I don't know if they have this on Amazon. If not, I'll leave it to their direct store. Gang, this is, this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. This is gonna be my one ingredient, the methyl cellulose burger. I'm gonna make a few more of these.